Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So today I'm going to do a wrap up of the books that I read, not for readathons in November. So I uh, will start off by tell I'll tell you, um, I read a total of 35 books in November, which is insane. Um, 19 of those were for readathons. So obviously today I have 16 other books that I'm going to talk about. If you're interested for my thoughts about the books that I read for the Lord of the Readathons and Evilathon, I'll leave those videos linked down below so you can check them out. Um, but yeah, so for Lord of the Readathons, I'll just quickly like tell you what books that I read if, in case you're interested. Um, so I read Spindle and Dagger, uh, Sword and Pen, Berserker, Galaxy's Edge, Black Spire, A Closed and Common Orbit, Dark Dawn, Aquaman Volume 1, The Trench, uh, Stars Uncharted, Seven Stones to Stand or Fall, Some Girls Bite, Cold Iron, and Dating You, Hating You. For Evil Athon, I read The Bone Houses, The Night Parade, Violet, The Devil Aspect, The Devil in the Deep, An Unwanted Guest, and Come Closer. So for this video, I'm going to go in order of, like, you know, lowest rating to highest rating. My lowest rating was a two star, so, you know, not as bad <laughs> as previous months. Um, and I only have one of them, so that's good. Uh, so the one that I rated two stars was Bridget Jones' Diary by Helen Fielding. So, like, I love this cover so much, and I thought I was going to like it, but it was so boring. Basically, I don't know. I mean, Bridget Jones' Diary, like, probably a lot of you know what it is already. Uh, it's kind of like Pride and Prejudice. Uh, so Bridget Jones, like, you know, we, we follow her diary entries for a, a year of her life and all the drama that happens with like friends, family, and herself. Um, yeah, so this was just incredibly boring. And I've seen the movie and I liked the movie. So I thought this would be more similar to it. And it's just, meh, I don't know. Um, so I think one of my main issues, which was just like totally my fault, uh, I didn't realize it would actually read like diary entries, which like dumb, that was dumb of me because it literally says Bridget Jones diary. So, you know, that's partly my fault. Uh, so yeah, it's just like, it just made it really hard to read. Um, I don't really enjoy, like, reading things that are kind of shorthand and, you know, I've, like, I've read other books that are supposedly diary, enter diary entries that, like, have full sentences, you know, and, like, that's totally fine. It reads more like a story. But this one, I just, mm, I don't know. I didn't really, I didn't really care for how it was presented. I didn't really get a great sense of any of the characters. Um, though obviously Daniel sucks, he's the worst, um, and it's not quite the same as the movie, and I do think the movie version is actually better, so I would suggest checking out the movie <laughs> instead of this one, the book, unfortunately. So then we get into the three-star range. So the first one I'll talk about here is Small Spaces by Catherine Arden, so I did listen to this on audiobook, um, and this, I mean... To be fair, I didn't really have high expectations going in because, like, I was pretty sure that I wasn't, I'm not really into middle grade anymore, and, you know, that, that was in fact true. Uh, so, you know, it's just like, I think this would be a much better book if you are either, you enjoy middle grade more than I do, or, like, you're a younger reader, I guess. Um, but yeah, so basically, like, I didn't feel like I was the intended audience, and, you know, the writing suffered, I guess, from that. This is by the same author who did the Winter Night Trilogy. Uh, so here, our main character, Ollie, finds a book that a woman is, like, attempting to throw into a river. Um, and she, Ollie's like, oh, no, I'll, t I'll take this book instead. The book is called Small Spaces, and it's kind of, you know, like a, a strange book. And then her class, Ollie's class, visits, like, a farm where people have disappeared mysteriously. Um, and eventually, like, the bus driver tells her that she need, she and her classmates need to run and, like, stick to small spaces. Um, so we end up with a lot of, like, really creepy scarecrows. And I will, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, so I think it was interesting enough, but it did feel too young for me. Especially, like, on audio. I was like, I can't really relate to any of these struggles anymore. Uh, I do think the idea is kind of creepy. Like, I don't really love scarecrows to begin with. There's also some, like, ghost aspects to it. Actual execution wasn't particularly creepy, but it is middle grade. So I think there's a lot of really interesting ideas, and I think this would work really well for younger readers. But, you know, again, I don't feel like I was the intended audience, so I didn't love it quite as much. But, yeah, still three out of five stars. 
So the next three out of five star book that I have to show you is Teen Titans by Jeff Johns. Uh, this is book one. So these, it was, was alright. Um, this, I think, again, it, it just like wasn't quite what I expected. Um, so it's like stories about the new generation of Teen Titans. Um, so, but we do have appearances by like Deathstroke, the Justice League, um, and like the original Teen Titans. So there is like a subplot with Raven in like the second half or so. I appreciated that because Raven is one of my favorite Teen Titans. Um, so basically what happens here is like all our, you know, new Teen Titans uh, join up together and like explore their powers. There's like Superboy, I think, uh, Wonder Girl, Kid Flash, um, a new Robin, Beast, Bo Beast Boy is still there, and Cyborg, and Starfire. Um, this, yeah, this was fine, but I think my main problem was like I didn't really care about all these these new characters, and I mostly just wanted to read this because, like I said, I like Raven, and I wanted to read more about Raven, and that's not what I got, so, or, well, I mean, there's like some of it, but that's not entirely what I got, so it was a little disappointing. Um, I don't know if I'm going to continue on in the series, like, I might explore different Teen Titans comics just because, like, again, I, I think I do prefer the original Teen Titans team. So, yeah. This was fine. This was fine. That's all I have to say about it. It was fine. <laughs> now we get into some of the three and a half star ratings. So the first book I'll talk about for the three and a half star rating is The Grace Year by... I should have looked this up. I don't know if it's Kim Liggett or Liggett. Um, but this is like a dystopian book where girls who are like 16 um, are sent away for a year to rid themselves of their magic because evidently like these people believe that girls of this age emit a powerful aphrodisiac so they're supposed to release their magic before returning to civilization. It wasn't clear to me just like as an aside if there maybe like weren't as many boys being born in this world but that, like again that doesn't really matter. Uh, <laughs> so Basically, like, men are in control and women are kind of looked down upon. Um, so this is, like, kind of a story about survival and, and friendships. Um, there is a little bit of instant love, but whatever. Uh, the main character, Tierney, I think, is, is pretty strong and kind of goes through this learning process about um, the magic and, like, the truth behind the grace here. And she's, like, really rebellious. So, like, I, I appreciated her as a main character. I thought she was fun. Uh, I didn't love how a lot of these girls, like, turned against each other. Um, but, like, I think for the most part, it did resolve itself. I really enjoyed this. It was it was easy to read. Um, I mean, see, it's not obviously easy and hard to read because, like, I, I have, I feel like with these types of dystopian books like this and, like, The Handmaid's Tale, um, it's also, it's just, the idea is so disturbing, like, sometimes I feel like we're not all that far away from these sort of things becoming reality, and that's, like, that's a little bit terrifying. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, like, in general, the book itself was, aside from, like, the topic, it was, it was easy and, and very quick to read. Um, so, like, it's not the most amazing book I've ever read, but I did have a really good time with it and would definitely recommend that you, you pick it up if that sounds interesting to you. The next three and a half star book that I'll show today, or talk about today, is Star Wars Resistance Reborn by Rebecca Roundhorse. So, like, I mean, I've talked about this fairly recently, but basically, like, the Resistance is in shambles after episode eight, and they're just uh, trying to recruit more people and, um, you know, fight against the First Order. So, so this is, like, kind of leading us up to episode nine. We find out that Resistance allies and former uh, Imperials are being, like, rounded up by the First Order. So that's why, like, you know, in episode eight, no one really responded to Leia's call for help. Okay, so we follow Ho, Leia, and some of the others. Um, we get to see old friends like Wedge and Tilly's and Nora Wexley, so that was kind of fun. Um, there's connections with people from the Star Wars Rebels show, and there's also this plot that comes up um, from Bloodline by uh, Claudia Gray, which I do recommend you read. That's a really good one. Um, and one of the characters from that book makes a return, so like that was really awesome. Uh, you know, the First Order is obviously still hunting them down, and you can like kind of feel the desperation of the Resistance. Um, overall, I think it was enjoyable, but I don't think it's necessary to really read before Episode Nine. I do think Rebecca Roanhorse did a pretty good job of capturing the characters' personalities and everything. Um, like it was a quick read. Uh, what I did, I think what I think I liked the most about this was we explore 
Poe's guilt from leading a mutiny in episode eight, which I, yeah, so I really appreciated that because in episode eight, I was like, what in the hell are you doing? Like, my God, this is a terrible idea. And so I, th I think it was, yeah, like, I think it's really interesting that he kind of realizes that he's made a mistake and is trying to come to terms with his actions and like what they led to. So yeah, I mean, I think if you're a big Star Wars fan, I would say like pick this up, but otherwise it's probably not like crucial to read if, <laughs> you know, before seeing episode nine. So the next three and a half star book I'll talk about is Realm of Ash by Tasha Suri. So I've kind of been debating if I want to write this like three and a half or four stars and I'm not really sure. So we're just going to talk about it here. Um, but yeah, so this is like a companion slash sequel to Empire of Sand. And I've talked about this like fairly recently. In this world, we kind of have um, this group of people like the Amrithi uh, who have these powers then can kind of like communicate with these gods. And the, the people in this world with the Amrithi blood are like kind of thought of as, as like cursed and impure. We follow Arwa, who is the sister to the main character from the first book, Mare. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing these names right. Um, but anyway, so Arwa is raised as, well, <laughs> who will continue to struggle at pronouncing these things? Um, she's raised as Amben? I don't know. I don't know if Amben is the right pronunciation, but uh, they're like, you know, the, the nobles of, of this world. Um, and so Arwa basically believes that she and like can actually pass as a noble woman. She's really loyal to this empire. She like survives a massacre at a fort and that's how her husband dies. And this like that happens before, you know, events of this book. And so these like devas, which are kind of, you know, these supernatural type creatures uh, are like hunting her. And so she volunteers to help Zaheer, who is like a, an illegitimate prince. Um, on his quest through the realm of Ash, would you like try to save the Empire? I didn't like this nearly as much as Empire Stand, unfortunately. So that was that was kind of a bummer. So I think my main problem here was I didn't feel like it was as easy to relate to Arwa as it was to Mare from the first book. Arwa does experience character growth, which I do appreciate. And by the end, like I did like her a bit more. But um, you know, at the beginning, I was like, uh, you know, I'm not really a fan of you. So that. That just kind of made it hard to get into. It's definitely a slower plot compared to Empire of Sand. Um, I don't think it's quite as engaging as like, you know, rebelling against the Empire. Kind of felt a little meh about the romance. Um, but yeah, so like basically to summarize this, like it was fine. I didn't like it nearly as much as Empire of Sand. But that being said, like I do think it's really lovely writing. Um, it's an interesting world and I do want to see what happens. Like I, I'm not entirely sure. I think there should be more books in this series, but not entirely positive about that. Uh, between Empire of Sand and Realm of Ash, like I think Empire of Sand and the main character kind of have like this more fiery rebellious feel, whereas Realm of Ash and Arwa are kind of like more quiet and reserved. So it's like, it's just totally different feels. Um, they're both good in their own right, but I personally related to the main character and liked Empire of Sand a bit more. But I do, I do recommend picking up this series. So the last of the three and a half star books that I'll talk about today is Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha and Young. This is a YA fantasy where girls are kind of like selected to be the Demon King's concubines. So our main character, Lei, is selected and like really hates that life and wants to escape it. Um, so, that, you know, really generic plot overview there. But like, I mean, the plot itself is kind of generic, but it's really easy to read. And I did have a really good time with it. There's definitely some content warnings here, like a dog gets killed fairly early on and I didn't love that, not not my favorite. Um, and then obviously there's, since these girls are being forced to be the Demon King's concubines, there's rape and abuse. Um, I, most of that happens off screen, but some of it does happen on screen. Um, I really liked the main character, Lei. I, she has a lot of like really admirable qualities, like she's really rebellious, um, she stands up for herself, um, she's pretty intelligent. I think I'm interested enough to read the sequel. Uh, there is like a female-female relationship. Uh, it may be developed a little bit quickly, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so like I don't really have a ton to say about this. I do think, yeah, not the most original YA fantasy I've ever read, but I enjoyed it enough and kind of like want to see what happens after these events. 
So now we're in the four out of five star range. So the first one I'll talk about here is The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. So I listened to this on audio. Basically the premise here are, is like teens with various gifts join the FBI to help solve cold cases, which is awesome. I love that sort of plot. Um, so our main character, Cassie, can like, her powers are, you know, kind of to, she's like a natural profiler. So she can kind of get into the heads of of people and like understand what motivates them. Her mom was murdered when she was younger so Cassie obviously joins the FBI team and like kind of wants to figure out what actually happened to her mother. There's a serial killer in this book and so we kind of alternate perspectives. So the serial killer starts to become a little bit obsessed with Cassie and you know things happen. I had a really great time with it. Uh, I thought the audio was fun. Um, I think it's a really fun idea. Like I said I really love these sort of you know, people with some sort of magical ability solving crimes. I did like the characters quite a bit. Um, there is a little bit of a love triangle, which, you know, is never really my favorite, but what can you do? I was surprised by the events and did not, in fact, guess what was going to happen. If this sounds like a fun premise to you, and like, I, I definitely recommend picking this this book up. Um, I want I want to continue the series for sure. The Next the four star books I'll talk about, I also listened to on audio, and that's Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is like a biography of a fictional rock band. Um, so I do highly recommend that you listen to this on audio. It was great. There's like a full cast. And most importantly, I learned this from Amber from Books of Amber, but Judy Greer from like Archer and obviously like other fame, but you know, she plays Cheryl, Carol, Shirlene, Crystal, I think. I think those are all the names. Um, she plays that on Archer. and. I think she's hilarious, but she is uh, Karen, one of the members of the band, and like that was that was like the real drawing point for me. The story about this rock band is and, and Daisy Jones um, is told through like a series of interviews. So we start off by kind of like documenting Daisy Jones' life, and um, and then you know like how she and the Sticks got together and just like their rise to fame and all the events that happen along the way. Obviously, there is a lot of substance abuse. There's so many, so many drugs happening and alcohol and, and whatnot. Uh, so just like be very aware that that is going to happen. I really liked Karen um, in particular and along with most of the band, but I did find Eddie a little annoying. It's a really like fun, but also sad book. Um, I like want to know more about this fictional band. So like obviously like I think it really drew me in if I, I care about this this rock band that doesn't even exist. Daisy I think in particular has some like really excellent quotes um, and just general life advice like there's that kind of you know resonated with me I guess. Basically she's like you know she's really unapologetic, unapologetic and is like you do you don't do things because others think you should which is like yeah I like it. I like that sentiment. Um, I think Amazon might be doing a TV sh series about this and I thought I saw that Elvis's granddaughter is going to be Daisy Jones but so that's like really cool. Uh, I think this is just a really fun book. I was surprised. I, I wasn't really sure if I was going to love this but I think listening to it on audio definitely helped a bit. Um, I will say something that kind of like brought it down from the five star range for me is just uh, like at times I, I did get a little tired I guess of, of hearing about all these drugs that people were doing. I've still really enjoyed it overall. Definitely recommend listening to it. The next of the four star books that I'll talk about is Visions of Heat by Nalini Singh. Um, so this is the third book in the Psy Changeling series and I did buddy read this with Amber at Books of Amber and again I'll leave her channel link down below. Um, so in this world again we basically have these people like these side people with kind of psychic powers and then we have the changelings who are shifters of various sorts. Um, so here we have our main female character is Faith and she is an F Psy so she can like kind of forecast and you know see the future. Um, so basically these F Psy's are kind of isolated to help pr their prediction powers so like you know business things like predicting the stock market and things like that. But she starts to have visions of um, a killer. And then our main male character Vaughn is a jaguar shifter and he's obviously the love interest. No one is surprised there. There's definitely some more like politics happening here and we do learn some more about the council which is really cool. Uh, and we also learn more about the Cynet and like what it's made out of. I really enjoy this world like it's these are these books are super easy to read. Uh, they're, I mean it's, it's paranormal romance so you know there's gonna be romance there's gonna be some smutty scenes but it's just it's just fun and like sometimes you just need some books like this that are <laughs> easy to read and kind of like palate cleansers. Um, but yeah, it's 
it's great. Uh, I liked Faith quite a bit. I mean, the the alpha male situation, I guess, of a lot of these love interests is like not generally my favorite, but all the female characters have been really fantastic. Uh, yeah, you know, just powerful, intelligent, badass. What more can you ask for? Um, but yeah, so like I, I definitely recommend picking up this series if you are at all interested in paranormal romance. It's fun. So the last of the four star books that I'll talk about today is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Um, so I finally read this and I feel like I'm like the last person on booktube to actually read it. Uh, so basically here we have this magical cir circus that suddenly appears places and our main characters Celia and Marco are kind of in a magical competition of sorts where there's only one winner. And this was, I think, I mean, that's like a very vague overview, but I think it's actually better to not know much about it going in. It turned out to not be what I expected, and I I like that. I thought it was going to be more magical realism, and I don't think it really is, so that's good. Um, I'm not big on magical realism, so I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, like I was a little worried about it going into this. The magical competition wasn't what I expected, really. I think it was beautifully written. I loved hear learning about the circus. Um, so we also follow... Bailey, who is a, a kid who really likes the circus and like kind of learn about his destiny. So generally I, I do think the competition was like a little unclear and I for some reason thought it was going to be like the hardcore magical duel and it's not. I don't know why I thought that. I really liked the characters and I felt for them. Um, I was just really drawn into this world and I don't know. It just it's, it's, a, it's a magical book, really. At times, I think there was maybe like a little bit, it was a little bit slow, but overall, I really was drawn into it and wanted to know what happened and just, you know, I don't know. I had a good time with it. I would definitely recommend reading it. So now we get into the five star range. Um, so the first book I'll talk about here is Scythe by, by Neil Schusterman. So again, I feel like I'm the last person on book two to actually pick this up, but I'm glad that I finally read it. Um, so this is kind of it's not really so much as a dystopian as like a dystopian utopian, perhaps. Um, so what I mean by this is like we, it's set in the future where there's like no more disease or poverty or, you know, hunger, war, or death. Um, so obviously since people aren't really dying as much, uh, the, we have to have some way to control the population so, that, you know, like we don't overexpand. But so these people called scythes are kind of tasked to kill people in the population. So we follow two characters um, kind of in competition to each other who are apprentices to be a scythe. I thought this was great. Oh my god. Um, I think it brought up a lot of really interesting and important questions and slash ideas uh, and it kind of just like makes you think about ethics I think and just like what would you do in this situation I guess. We kind of see the scythe struggle with this difficulty of uh, making these decisions on, you know, who to kill. Obviously, it's a it's a really hard decision, and it should be a, a hard decision. I thought it was it was really engaging. I flew through it and just loved every minute of it. Uh, I have bought the second and third books in this series, and I'm very excited to read them. The next of the five out of five star books that I'll talk about is Strange Planet by Nathan W. Pyle. So this is, I mean, just like a short little comic book series, uh, but you know, it's it's it was cute. I'm like, I don't really have much to say about it other than like, you know, it's it's. A series of comics where aliens are like experiencing things in the human world and like kind of have awkward ways of of phrasing certain things and it's just like it's just kind of comical waffles are crisscross flop discs um so you know we just have like really fun cute terminology of explaining real world world things um it's funny it's adorable i just it's great just a really cute heartwarming comic series so then i read Taken and Chosen by Benedict Jacka, and so these are the third and fourth books in the Alex Barris series. Um, so we'll start with Taken, because that's obviously the third one. Uh, so here it's, it's an urban fantasy series where our main character Alex is a diviner, so he can like kind of see probabilities of like how events would play out, and so like can kind of see the future. In this world we have like light and dark mages and um, like a council of mages. And there's like generally like supernatural creatures and creatures from mythology. Uh, so the, the basic plot line behind this particular book is like apprentices are vanishing and Alex gets involved in like tracking them down while also training his own apprentice. Along the way there are some mage duels and sketchy houses. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, I think it, the series is really entertaining. It's very easy to read. Uh, 
Alex, the main character, is awesome. He's, like, not the most powerful mage, but he, like, he knows that and, like, can kind of, has, has, has kind of come up with clever ways to use his powers in order to, like, survive and fight and, you know, whatnot. That's some really interesting ma magic in this world. Like I said, like, you know, being a diviner, you can see probabilities. Uh, there's, like, luck magic. There's time magic. There's life magic. So there's a really a, a whole bunch of, of fun uh, magical abilities, I guess. Chosen is the fourth book in the series, and basically, like, some old actions come back to haunt Alex. Uh, and like things that he did when he was a an apprentice to a dark mage, um, people are trying to kill him. And but like it's really excellent. It ends with a bang. Uh, I continue to love this series. Um, Alex is mostly on his own here, and kind of has to decide what kind of person he wants to be. You know, like does your past define you for all eternity, or can you change and, and like improve yourself? So we definitely like do see hints of his darker side for sure. This is such a great urban fantasy series. I think if you like the Dresden Files, you will likely like this series as well. So the final book I'll talk about today is Starsight, Reprimand, and Sanderson. So, like, obviously I didn't show you this when I did my last book haul because it just came out, like, last week or whatever, and I've already bought and read it, so, you know, here it is. Starsight is the sequel to Skyward, and this is Brandon Sanderson's, like, YA sci-fi series. In Skyward, these humans are trapped on a planet, and there's, like, sort of, you know, aliens keeping them trapped there, and our main character, Spensa, kind of, like, learns, uh, she enrolls in a flight academy and, like, you know, learns how to fly spaceships and um, has to fight against these aliens. And so Starset, I think, really, like, kind of expands the scope. So, you know, Skyward is, took place on this planet, and now we're, like, you know, in space. We do expand to new areas in space, and there's, like, still kind of an academy-type setting, um, but we, we have new characters and new species, which is really cool. Uh, Spinsa, the main character, learns more about her abilities and, you know, continues to be really awesome. She is pretty hilarious and just a delight to read. Generally, this book is fantastic. I mean, it's Brandon Sanderson. I love Brandon Sanderson. This continues to be fabulous. Uh, we have, like, some fun revelations in here. It's an interesting new setting and, like, my god, that ending. I desperately need the next book in the series. Spinsa, like I said, is, is just really clever and just wonderful to read about. Um, the interactions between her and like Doomslug and Imbot are fantastic, as well as her interactions with these new characters. Um, yeah, so I highly recommend the series. I, I mean, just generally highly recommend Brandon Sanderson. This is fabulous. I loved it, and I just I need I need the next book. Those are the sixteen books that I read outside of the two readathons that I did in November. Let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books or think you might pick them up. I hope you're having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up. That would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one.